Good evening, everyone, and we are live. Yes, finally. So by this time yesterday, we were all seated and waiting, but um, unfortunately, and for reasons beyond our control, we couldn't hold this class. But we are here today, and I see some people already here waiting, saying hi, hi. <laughs> Hello to you. If you're on Facebook or you're on YouTube, we celebrate you. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I don't think um, our Facebook audience can connect yet, but um, we're live on YouTube and that is fine. Yes, I have Uncle Isaac in the building. I was just um, telling Uncle Isaac that he doesn't look like he has had a stressful week or day. He just looks so cool. I don't know if he has anything to do with the brain or the exercises he has been doing on his brain. Uncle Isaac is going to share that with us <laughs> in a minute. So let me tell you guys a bit about um, the guests that we have here. Uncle Isaac is one of my one of our big bosses. If you if you live in Abuja, um, you or you have passed through Abuja before, you know that these are the elders of the land. Before you enter the city gates, you have to go and pay homage to people like. Uncle Isaac. But for me, Uncle Isaac is much more than that because he's like an encyclopedia. He's a, a, a well of knowledge. So Uncle Isaac, let me make an open confession to you now. Um, somebody was trying to market, you know, swimming lessons to me and said, oh, come, I'm going to do it cheaper than what um, you're getting. I'm going to do this. At, I say, no, please. Uncle Isaac is not just swimming that is teaching me. I'm tapping some other. When I go for swimming lessons, I will learn life lessons because Uncle <laughs> Isaac is always very excited to, to dish out knowledge. He was the one that told me that I'm an endangered species. For those of you that have been asking, who is this person that motivated you to learn swimming at 43? To the extent that my mom, who is 65, says, eh? You mean you can learn how to swim? Then I can learn how to swim at 65. <laughs> because of Oko Isaac. So you can imagine who we have here. Thank you so much for joining me. And Oko Isaac, thank you so much for making time out. I know that it's, it, it, it has taken something out of you and we don't take it for granted. I just wanted the parents to have a feel of what, the, what their children are going to enjoy this weekend. That was why um, I, I begged for you and appealed for you. And thank you so much for, for granting me that. So, so I want to just um, maybe introduce yourself while I check if everybody is connected live and so that they can join us because Facebook is not connecting, but YouTube is up. So they can join us on YouTube. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Tima. Thank you for um, this opportunity to be here to speak to the world changers called parents. You know, as parents, we are, we are the ones who change the world. We, we are the king makers. And it's a, it's a privilege to be a parent. It's just that you, it's like you're a partner with God to bring to you here the, the divine plan. Thank you very much for um, that so opportunity. Facebook is not on. Connect, but YouTube is on. Just get the link and share to them. Okay. Okay, so. Okay, so sorry, sir. So sorry about that, sir. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So, like, like she said, there are bits like um, parents hang out, you know. Let's just talk about um, a few things that will be uh, bringing to the construction uh, management, management uh, class. class. Yes, sir. Now, my, for information, my children, my two boys have enrolled. have enrolled my... Um, <laughs> My sisters, how do you, I was I was trying to ask the Tima how you put the Tima. The Tima brought another dictionary for me and said this, uh, my, ne my nephew in law, my wife's uh, nephew in law. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gotten now. Why, why am I saying this? I think we it's 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 something we must all get involved with. 
Today, I had an experience with a teenager, just a teen, and he's supposed to be doing a course, and he came up with a very terrible attitude. A terrible attitude which is coming from a distraction he has now been addicted to using um, a car. You know, as parents, many times we are pressured by society to give what we should not give to our children. And like this course is very important for all of us to know that distractions are the things that destroy the future of our children. Once anybody is distracted, it becomes a problem. There was a, a Chinese um, movie I watched some time ago, and there was this, this, this guy who was trained to fight. It was a competition. At a point, the only thing the teacher or the coach was telling him was focus, just focus, focus. When he comes back for the break, he gives his complaints. The teacher will just say, I mean, the coach will tell him, focus, focus, just focus. Each time you want to hit, focus. If he, if he, if he hits you at, uh, at a point that is very painful, don't look at where he has hit you, focus on him. Focus makes you achieve the results that you want to achieve. Distractions will take it away from you. And that's why and I'm going to celebrate the team for bringing this course to, to help us help our children manage the multiple distractions in this current world. We didn't have all these distractions when we were growing up. But today, they, are, they, 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 they have to to go around these distractions and, and succeed. Now, you can't remove them from the world or from the system, but you can train them to focus. And that's why we're bringing it. So today, we'll just talk about um, using games to improve your brain. Yeah. And let me ask, I don't know if I can, if we, uh, they, we, can, we can get um, responses from parents, right? Yes, because we can. I'll read them out. Yes, sir. Okay, it, it all starts <laughs> from all of us. Let me ask you as a parent, if you're a parent who is watching this, sincerely tell me, what game can you play or perform? Just write so that you can tell us. What can you do as a parent, mother or father? Because if we want our children to, to play games, which is becoming very difficult, school is interfering with education right now. Schools are not allowing children to play, to have game times. How many schools have game um, arcades or um, sports facilities? Today, we spend so much money in schools, paying school fees. Ask yourself sincerely, do you really, are you really interested in what your child does outside the academic work? Let me tell you, the human being is higher than academics. In fact, studies is showing now that the more time children spend trying to grasp academic work, they lose out in the things that make life beautiful. We have made our children to become, we have made them um, like robots. You do this, the other day I was invited to, uh, to a forum and I told them there, I said, please allow the children to play, allow them. After school, they come back home, you have arranged a lesson teacher. The lesson teacher will start teaching lessons. The child, before the child, um, before the, you, you know it, it's 8 p.m., it's 9 p.m., the child needs to sleep. No other activity, no play. No, 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 no. You are not raising a child. You are raising somebody that will become a problem in the future. The human brain loves to break, to go to take a break. Now we say that if you don't take a break, you may break. You may break down. Take a break. The brain does not learn in, in, in chunks. It learns in units, bits, bits and pieces. The brain is like the picture. What you call a picture? A picture is an association or a collection of pixels. Pixels make pictures. So once you collect pixels together, they make pictures. Its pixels are very tiny, minute, light uh, arrays that form to form a picture. So when you talk about photography, photo, light, graphic, 
draw. So you draw with light. And in the drawing with light, it's in pixels, little, little, tiny, 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 makes a picture. So if we want the picture of our children, the picture of their future to become something that is desirable, something that is acceptable and, and very uh, uh, admirable for us, we must bring in these little, little pixels. Now, you know, somebody tells you my camera is, is 10 pixels. Another person tells you my camera is 50 pixels. If the, the picture taken by the camera that is 50 pixels will be brighter, sharper than the one taken by 10 pixels. So what does that mean? With more pixels coming together, you form sharper, brighter pictures that people will want to look at. So, and that's why, you know, in photography, you find it different cameras with different uh, picture, uh, many, I mean, lenses with different uh, um, picture quality and, and, and the number of pixels. So, parents, now, so can we read it? Let me hear you. But I want to have, let's, let's, let's talk. So, I so have, have only one person. Parents, are you there? Why are you all quiet? Okay, I see someone. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. MS says she can play Ludo, Monopoly, Snake and Ladder, Scrabble, no sporting activities. Mercy Victor oh. says she can play Ludo, card game, and puzzle. We're still waiting for more. Um, more let's be fast. Let's type. Let's make it yes. very interactive and enjoyable. Let's not just sit and just watch. Yes, let's, let's, you cannot um, play. Just say I cannot. There is no. Yes, so let's go. Yes. And you so see, after, this, after the, the it's a, it just, just a. The time to just hang out and talk. It's going to be therapy for you. After this, you go and start doing some things. You therapy, have to, yeah. Nice you one. Therapy go. free yeah. of charge. Our classic yeah, session is like go. 100K session. No? So this is free of charge therapy. Taiwo Bello so, says all of the above. <laughs> I guess that she's also able to play only Ludo Ka Oh, oh, classic. Um, now, so I'm not talking say, about I'm not talking about board games. I'm talking about... Th that's the thing. Games. Being That's the thing, sir. Yeah, so most of us grew up with this kind of things. Okay, I can see someone say badminton. Good. So we're talking about outdoor games, not just board outdoor. games. Not just, not board just games. indoor. Outdoor. Yeah. Okay, Remy outdoor. says board games and swimming. Good. Um, who else? The rest are all indoor card games that we used to play as children. I don't know if we, if we, if there was a problem with our generation, because really most of us could play um, those, those card puzzles, crossword puzzles and stuff like that. Mm. Okay, Deborah says table tennis. Taiwo Pedro says badminton and swimming. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. The, um, Deborah, Deborah said table tennis. Yes, Deborah alone has said um, table tennis. Hilda, okay, Brown says Deborah, can, you, can, you play, can you play table tennis very well? Let me hear you. Can you play very well? Table tennis. Deborah Brown, can you play very well? Or you're can just you like me that well? is somewhere in between I can play and I can't play. <laughs> I'm somewhere in the middle. Okay. Um, Tyro Bello says football with my son. Um, um for okay. like a shout out to you, say Scrabble Ludo swimming. For like a, you cannot play table tennis or lawn tennis. Hello, ma'am. For, like, for, like for, like for like will be very great at table tennis. I don't know why she doesn't know how to play. Please, for like a, we are calling you out right now. <laughs> or oh, basket basketball, yes. She cannot play any of them, sir. She can't. She yes, can, I'm going go. to drag her. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you know what, parents? Do you know what, parents? Um, I think we need to come out of our very boring lives, you know. Hmm. So let's start doing some competitions. Let's start. Somebody can win a 2023 Toyota Corolla for knowing how to play games. Parents, come out. Let's go and yeah. let's go compete, not professionally, but for leisure. Yes. Okay. Now, if you could so, play... So, Deborah Brown says not professionally, but for leisure. Okay, that means you could you could play, handle the bat and play. So, what if we now arrange competitions for parents? We do badminton competition, uh, table tennis, for parents only. And we showcase it. You call Channel TV, AIT, call the TV stations to come and, come and um, cover these events. For parents, exclusive for parents. And prizes will be won. We'll get sponsors. We want to get, you can have, um, uh, all expense paid trip. 
at the transfer hilton for the weekend you know you have something, something that you know will be worth your while but we need to do that so that our children can see can see we can play with these children so because if you are if if you want to have a conversation with your son who rides a bicycle and you cannot ride a bicycle you have this a disconnect but if you can ride you can say well, let's go ride Let's go ride a bicycle this evening. Then you go out. Then as you're riding, you stop somewhere. I just say, let's just uh, let's let's take a break for five minutes before we continue. Then you chat. You chat with him, with, with your child there. And that those events, I mean those I mean uh, those times are very valuable. You know, there are things that are not that are, are unforgettable. When you have those events where you have that time with an activity that the child considers to be very important to him or her, the child will remember that he went with me to play, to went riding with me, and we had a conversation. We had a conversation on how to be respectful. When you meet elders, when you even if the you meet elders and those younger, then you make sure you greet everyone. Like I tell my children, greet everybody you meet because. Greeting is the first sign of love. It's the first sign of expression of love. Now, my younger son now asks, what if I'm, I'm older than the person? I say, it doesn't matter. Greet everybody you meet first. You be the one who does the greeting. Greet first. Now, once you greet somebody, you, send, you are sending a pleasantry. I love you. And I want you to have a good morning. I want you to have a good afternoon. I want you to have a good evening. That is an expression. Now, when those conversations are done in those events or those times, it sinks and it, it, it gets home very nicely. So that's why you need all those things to play. And you know, you see when you play external games, for instance, if you're playing badminton, you're not even playing badminton professional for any form of uh, professional game, just for fun or for leisure. Now, once you hit with the with the racket, you hit the cock, and it falls, and the, the the child tries to pick it, and it falls down. There is that, oh, you missed it. All those, oh, ah, laughter, oh, whoa, I'm old. Those are the things that keeps the brain excited, and the person wants to come back tomorrow to have conversation with you or to have to play with you. Remember in those days, I remember very well, I love to play with my friends. So each time we have a quarrel, we quickly resolve the quarrel. Do you know why? We resolve the quarrel because we are, I look forward to the play. And that quarrel is going to stand in between me and the play. So I must remove that quarrel to play later. But once somebody doesn't give you any excitement, you don't have any time, any quality time, exciting, exciting time, play time with that person. You don't, you can quarrel forever. You can keep mad, it's nothing will happen because there's nothing coming from it. But the person you play with, your playmate, uh, don't want anything to come in between. Very so, as parents, if we don't activate our external, I'm, I'm talking of external, not internal, outdoor, not indoor, outdoor, where we need to move. Now, the brain has a principle. One, the number one principle of the human brain is movement. Once you don't move, the brain feels you are die, you are dead, or you are about to die. Whatever is not moving is dead or about to die. In medicine, if you if you if you uh, if you come to the emergency uh, unit, the emergency uh, department, or casualty, when they bring in um, a casualties into the, the the unit during emergencies. When you find a casualty who is screaming and shake and um, moving the hands and legs, my hand, my leg, my hand, my leg, oh, oh my hand, and he's screaming. You find that medical professionals or doctors or nurses who just will look at the patient, and if another patient comes in that is quiet and only gasping. Just gasping and you just get um, just sounds like <gasps> now 
Medical professionals will attend to the gasping patient before they attend to the one who is shouting and moving hands and legs. Why? Anything that is moving, that <laughs> anything that is moving is alive. We will not die. That one will not die yes. quickly. <laughs> and that's why, you know, as a relative, sometimes we get wow. very angry. The yes. man is shouting between me. People are not helping. They're not that's helping this person. Is. They already know that, that one, the number that. one characteristic of living wow. things is movement. If it's moving, it's alive. Mm. So if you're not moving your body, there's a problem. And let me say this here. There's the evolution of the current world. The virtual world we have gotten into, the fast world of the digital world, is going to present a lot of disease conditions and drawbacks to health. I mean, to to health and well-being, because now we are now we are now we are now moving less than we used to move in the future. I mean, in the past, sorry, we are moving less. We drive our very posh cars. Our roads are well. Uh, we have nice roads. We park very close to the supermarket gate. You get get off your you disembark um, um, from your car quickly. What do you do? You get into the mall in five or ten steps. You buy yeah. what you need to buy. You're not moving much. You're not moving much. And because you're not moving much, you're not engaging your brain much. There's what we call the mind or brain body connection. The mind brain body connection tells you that if you move your mind, you move your body. If you move your body, you move your mind. So once you're not moving, you're, it means that you're not going to get the uh, inspiration you need to be able to solve many problems. You find that sometimes you have some very, very, very serious problems that if you take a walk, a 30 minutes walk, just walking briskly for 30 minutes, you begin to get ideas of how to solve your problems. You find that we even teach it in, in, in anger management that you get when you get extremely angry about something, take a take walk. A walk. That walk mm. once you're walking, the brain goes into the thinking phase, begins to give you reasons why you should diffuse mm. this anger now and mm. solutions to be able to go forward. Mm. But once there's no movement, you are there, you now get into the anger mood. And when anger gets to a mood, it becomes destructive to your health. Mm. You know, when people talk, many people don't understand um, emotions, and they, they talk about anger as a bad emotion. Anger yeah. is not a bad emotion. In fact, I'm going to do I'm going to do a talk on the the succeeding with anger. Succeeding with anger. If you're not angry sufficiently, you will not be able to succeed. You need anger to succeed. Drive is from anger. Anger is a fuel. So the question is, like you misappropriate budgets of nations, you can misappropriate the energy from anger. Anger is energy. Anger gives you the, um, the opportunity to make a change. It tells you, it's telling you something. It's, it's a feedback. So once you move, that anger will now, you, you will now be able to see what, all emotions are telling you something. What is this emotion telling you? Emotions are not bad. They are, yeah. they are messengers. They are data. So wow. movement, like we said, movement, very, very important. How do you move your body? I mean, how do you move your brain, move your body? Mm. Even mm. in public speaking, you want, to be, you want to speak well. It's about energy. Like there's a way I stand during a, a presentation that sends a message to the crowd that this man is timid this man is anxious this man has um, uh, phobia stage phobia movement i can move my body lift my i can i can position my my shoulder in a certain way that gives that sends a message of confidence and that's why in self-defense self-defense is not first of all fighting physically self-defense is first of all having a posture there's mm. somebody you find who is walking and you're not going to approach the person to cause the person any form of harm and there's somebody else you find walking you go there why if you find somebody who whose shoulder is down and um yes. uh, uh drooping shoulder you know yes yes you can attack <laughs> that person but you find somebody whose shoulder is square 
and it's he moving. No, say. no, 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 no. He's telling you this man is confident, he's strong, and he's ready to take action. But All those be, talks about movement. Yes, I, I love when you said um, to move your brain, move your body. You know, yes. because we're, we're now at an era where people are scared, you know, they, they please, you know, security issues. Whenever there is any reason for their children to leave their site, there's a problem. Mm. Yeah. It, it could Does that mean that we're actually um, doing more harm than good to our children? Yes. We're doing more harm than good. Because even some yeah. schools, like in Abuja, some schools are inside duplex. I don't even understand. So, so, and we don't have fields. We don't have like. So, where are these children actually playing? Where are they doing these exercises? You go to work, sit from morning till five p.m. or wherever it is you're doing your business. Minimal work. Come to the house, same thing, and then your children, same thing. What kind of generation? What kind of families are we breeding? What kind of families are we raising? Are we going to all be sick in the next ten, fifteen years? This is what Uncle Isaac is saying, you know, because somebody is thinking, um, let's just play, let's just sit down in the house and, and play. No, you have heard the no. you have heard the principle of the brain. It needs yes. to move, stand up, move. Whether you're move. fat, tall, big, whatever, just move. And you know how children these days, the Uncle Isaac, on camp, you know what I noticed. You tell teenagers, let's do, let's go here or let's move here. So on camp, for example. We have a rule. You're not permitted to stroll on camp. That's why camp is stressful. We want mm. you to walk briskly. The first day is always a problem. Quick movement. Yes. So, so they just want to like, some of them, if they have their way, we should use stretcher and move them. You tell them that's where the dining is. They have a problem with it. Why can't they bring the food here? And I'm like, mm. what is going on? <laughs> so we need to understand that all those activities, some people don't even understand why should my children come to camp? What are they doing there that they have not been doing in their school? They don't understand that the curriculum and the, you know, the activities has been built for their overall well-being. It's not everything mm. that is academic. So classic started with that point. So what 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 should we say to parents that would encourage them to just allow these children to move, please? All these my please don't stress my child, don't stress my child kind of thing. Now, my mm -hmm. children, when they come back from school, the first question I ask them is, did you play today? Did you hey. play today? If you didn't play today, I'm not happy with it, with your school. Ah. I don't even ask you what academic work you did today. Play. I tell you, you come back now, go out, go and play. Go out, go out, 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 out go and play. You know why? Look at, you see, let me, let me say this here, and, um, and it's good that we're hanging out as parents. Let's talk to ourselves. This life we are living, are we enjoying our lives? Are you, hey. are you really happy? Hey, are you not you on your own, husband and wife? Don't you think you are boring? Just be sincere. Are you happy? Sincerely, this one is not. Let's not. Let's not just. Are, are we happy? Think back. See the real life. The real life is in our childhood, and we must continue to relive it. No human being. You remember, no human being will go back to their childhood, their experiences, and not smile. But the good thing is that you can continue to relieve your childhood. Parents have become, now we do all the work, right? We are busy. And when we talk, we say we are working for the children. Yes, we are working, yes, for, we are working for you. Exactly. No, don't say that. If you are a, a, a good parent, let me tell you. A good parent will take care of themselves first. You remember when you enter an aircraft, they, they, they give an instruction. They say, when eventually there is a loss of oxygen, oxygen mass will drop from the cabin, I mean, from the uh, platform above you. Fix for yourself first before fixing for others. Even with a child, they say, fix for yourself. Before fixing for you know what parents 
what we are doing as parents, we are fixing for children and we are not fixing for ourselves. Wow. Let me ask you. I asked the parent this question very seriously, and that was when she woke up. I said, do you love your children? She said, yes. I said, do you take care of yourself? She said, I do all this information. I said, if you die now, do you really think you love your children to die and leave them for what you could have controlled? That was when she woke up. She was not taking care of herself. She was not exercising. She was overweight. In her overweight now, she now became sick. And now asked her that if the bank, if you bring one billion naira to the bank, what would they do? Ah, they will promote me. They will promote me. Ah, what are you saying? I say, ah, one billion. I get the cost, one billion. And I said, if somebody tells you to come and take a billion naira at 12 million, you will say, I will go. I will say, I want billion. Do you know what you're talking about? I was okay. You have financial plans for yourself to get the money. How about your own health plan? You know, say, ah, you know, you know. I want us to prioritize ourselves. Grow your own brain. Let me tell you, if you don't use it, you lose it. That's a brain principle that has gone round everywhere. Any brain cell not being used is going to be lost. So these days you are finding people looking looking for their keys and their keys are with them in their, in their hands. The keys are with you. You are looking for the key. Where did I keep my key now? Ah, what, ah, what, 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 the key is with you. We have become very sedentary. Everything is remote control. AC, remote. TV, remote. It's remote. We don't even move again. Oh my God, oh classic. <laughs> okay, no you can this table. <laughs> no movement. And it's so true. We used to go and switch on the TV before, but now yeah. you just lie down, cruise, and yeah. just switch it off. How come? <laughs> AC we remote, car around. remote. Yes. Fridge, remote, everything. Oh my god. Everything goodness. remote control. Easy life, easy life, easy life. Oh lord. Easy life. Easy life is not good for the body. If your if your life becomes too easy, your body will die. Your body will fail. Is it not true that as you are becoming wealthy, we start imbibing unhealthy behaviors? Now you're going to the airport. Wealthy man. You yes. have like uh, you have like uh, 80 million naira. Then instead of pulling that your bag, that's your bag that gives you muscle memory and activates your, your basal ganglia for muscle activity. Somebody will come to carry it for you in the form of you are a big man now and the person, you want to give the person money so you should not be carrying stuff. Do you know what you have done? You have extended the lifespan of that other person and shortened your own. You see why Nigerians wonder why we don't guys. You find the, uh, the the U.S. president carrying his bag, carrying his umbrella that by himself and all that. They say, ah, don't they have people to carry this thing? Why? Do you know that if you stop carrying things like the way we are going, you are not lifting anything. You're not lifting any weight. Your body will lose the sense of. I mean, your muscle will lose the sense of that memory sense of lifting and holding things. It will, you now have a medical condition. Today is even so bad that people no longer hold their phones. They give somebody else the phone to hold. They are just I holding. I don't them. understand that one, sir. <laughs> this wealth. You may think it's well. You may think it's well. Oh, I'm wealthy now. What are you talking about? I'm the I'm the I'm the DG. What is this thing that look? Let me tell you. If you want to be alive, carry your bag. Pull your bag by yourself. Carry it. It's not because you don't have money. It's because you want to stay alive. Push that uh, trolley by yourself. It's helping you to activate your muscle memory that, oh, there's something. Do you know that um, after the age of 30, you begin to lose 1% to 3% of your muscle mass every year? The only thing that makes you keep your muscle mass is movement and resistance training, weight lifting. So all these buckets, you know, in those days, you carry carry two buckets and you're carrying them. Ah, you are walking to 
is helping you. you. Oh my it's like goodness. God's love is helping you. That's the life. Carrying things. See, don't get too wealthy that you start dying. Ah. Wow. The late wow, Mas wow, wow. the late Mas Muro washes his car by himself. Why? To activate, to move around. Do you know that time he's washing, going around the car, moving and all that? It's a lot of exercise for him. It's a lot of connection to the earth for him. It's a lot of holding and lifting things for, for the muscles to have that memory that we are still there. We're See, still here. Yeah. Add one kilogram. We lift one kilogram today, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Tomorrow, come, lift that one kilogram, it becomes lighter. By the third day, the one kilogram becomes so light. You take two kilograms, you have to continue to engage and challenge your muscles to grow. All this, let me tell you, they are strengthening the brain. If your muscles are getting strong, your brain is also getting strong. Now, once your skin is flabby, once your skin is flabby, your, it's like the same way you have like your loose brain. Let's call it in quote, loose brain. You can grow, you can strengthen your brain by exercising and moving. You can improve, you can, you can adjust the age of your brain. Listen now, this is very interesting. You can adjust the age of your brain by physical activity. Physical activity, movement. Now, people are getting so... We have, we have a drug epidemic now, isn't it? There's a drug yes, epidemic. Yes, drug, yes, abuse, yes. drug abuse epidemic. Do you know why? We are not moving. Each time you don't move, you stimulate the body begins to seek something. Say, give me something to feel good. Give me a high. I don't, what's this? It's boring. The brain hates to be bored. So, all those drugs they take, marijuana, cocaine, um, uh, uh, all the amphetamines, and all those stuff that they take. Listen. What movement does for you is the same thing those drugs do. If you don't move, you may take those drugs eventually. You may need to take them because the brain needs to get some high to be strengthened and to be able to function. So you find people getting into stimulants, buying stimulants. All these, uh, what do you call these drinks? You could take now um, energy drinks. And energy all that drinks. Yes. You know why? The brain needs it to sharpen up. And, but the problem now is it is exogenous. It is from outside, not inside. The body has an internal pharmacy. There's a pharmacy in the muscle. There's a pharmacy in the brain. They produce drugs. There's a manufacturing pharmacy in the body. The body manufactures what you call endogenous morphine, called endorphins, that you get from exercise, movement, externally. That endorphin, or that, uh, yes, endorphin, which is morphine, in the, the, the ones that people buy and use, is the one responsible for analgesia, pain relief. The body goes through a lot of things during the day. Once you go and exercise and move and move and move, the brain will stimulate the release of endorphins. Those endorphins will go to all the parts of the body that has pain and kill the pains. So that we have, we call it the, the um, uh, an, 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 an analgesia system. There's a system called the algesia and analgesia. They go there to function. They release it there. So you feel good. Check it. This time you go and exercise. You feel so good. You feel ah, this is nice. Yes, very good, true, sir. Things. Yes, yes, very true. There's just this joy, you know. This kind, yes. of, it's like what teenagers say. This thing, this thing, they give me joy, you know. Yeah. It's it's painful in sometimes, but it's sweet. there's just this this feeling of fulfillment and sweetness that That's it. you know these exercises bring. <laughs> the brain, the brain has a center called play center. There's a center in the brain called play center. Play. And that's why, have you wondered why even in, our, in the digital world, if you want to go and get some apps to do your function, they say go to the what? Play store. 
What's in the Play Store? That's where life is. Play Store. Go to the Play Store. The brain has play in Play Store. You don't activate it, it begins to destroy your, your the other parts of it because it begins to, you know, get resist, resistant. What's going on? I'm not getting what I'm supposed to get. Give me something. Give me something. And that's what pushes people to take drugs. You see, this um, um, cough syrup, uh, codeine, that people take, the, what does codeine do? Codeine is a narcotic analgesic. But what it does is there's a part of the brain it goes to depress during cough. There's a cough center in the brain that a codeine goes to depress to stop the cough. Now, a problem comes once you take it above the dose that is required for what we call it the antitussive property. Once the antitussive property has been exceeded, it now goes to what we call the um, analgesic property. It moves from there to the, uh, the other property where you now go to the hallucinogenic property. So you can take those stuff and you now have what you call euphoria, the sense one sense of well-being that nobody's like unto you. You are walking on 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 the air. And the, the, the complex thing about this is that you can go into what we call narcosis. Narcosis is excessive sleeping, and your brain begins to sleep, and from the sleep, from your brain, from, from, from the sleep, you can die. There's what we call narcotic. There's what we call narcotic um, or, um, overdose. There's what we call narcotic overdose. So, and these things that people take, you get it for movement, exercise. If you are addicted to exercise, congratulations. Your, addict, your addiction is verified. You have that tick. We'll take that verified sign for you. Correct. <laughs> so, awesome. and one good, how we can do this is to form support groups like we're doing now. If I call you say, Tima, let's, let's go and we're going to, you know, we're swimming by six. We're swimming six to 6.30. We meet there to swim. After swimming, everybody is happy. We go. We say we're taking a, we're doing a road walk on, on, on Saturday from seven to eight o'clock. We meet, we do the road walk. We, we chat, we go. We say we are playing badminton. We start a badminton uh, club. We play. Before you look, let's activate these things. It will make us live longer. Our brains will be sharper. Memory. Listen, in, in brain science, hmm, age. Age should be directly proportional to creativity. But what do we find now? Age it's inversely proportional to creativity. So you meet people, they tell you, they tell you, I'm, 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 I'm 60 years old. Gambia, I can't do this thing. So to that person at 60, the brain power is going down. No, 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 no. It means that the brain has not been stimulated sufficiently, and that's why it's having those issues. So it means that as you grow older, your brain should be sharper, more creative. But how do you do that? It's from what? Stimulation. One stimulation is physical exercise moving the body now you see table tennis that we're all joking with that we we, did, we have not taken seriously <laughs> the best the best brain sport is table tennis everybody listen because i asked this question so if you see what people were answering me somebody said eating another person said uh, reading somebody yeah. said uh, money so people were even finding it funny you know, they the didn't know that it was something. Is, hmm. that is uh, table tennis. Now, that why? See, when you go, go and play. Now, as it is, you see, put a table. In those days, when we were much younger, we didn't have the conventional, sophisticated table tennis boards we have now. We just created a table, put something at the middle, and we got our, our bat. We don't even have the conventional bat there. We make, get wood, carve it into something you can hold, then get the, the, the egg, and we'll just be tossing it. Now, check that tossing. As you toss, there's what you call ah, the eye-hand connection. There's the prefrontal cortex connection. There's thinking. There's strategy. You have the, the, the prefrontal uh, brain uh, connection. You have occipital. You
Oh, sorry about that. Um, I guess Mr. Isaac's network is hanging. But so far, do you want to share what, what your major take takeaway has been? Please go to the comment section and um, write it. Oh, sorry, he's gone. I guess he'll be back soon. Um, earlier on, I had mentioned about the Teens Mentoring Bootcamp, a platform where we, we want to move these children. And many times, the, the attempt to resist the movement. But we know what we are doing. We are building so many other skills. It's not like we cannot do camp online. No, we can. As a matter of fact, we have the online platform for those that cannot make it to camp. But you see, coming to camp physically makes a lot of difference. Okay, welcome back, sir. Sorry about oh, sorry, that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I was trying to talk about um, um, China and the Asian countries. Try to okay before that. I said try to go and watch a table tennis game and see how it goes. Try and go to YouTube and watch table tennis and see how it goes. Now, have you wondered what's happening in China and Asia, the Asian countries? This creativity, innovation you're finding is not ordinary. They are trained to play table tennis, both male and female, and that's why they're the world champions. And go and check the speed. I want to be a bit curious this evening after we finish. Take your YouTube and just check and see what these Asian children are doing with table tennis. Now, as you are, the thing with the brain, the way the brain learns and learns well is from activities. They learn more from activities. Innovation is derived, is achieved faster from play. So, these Asian people have uh, discovered that there's a secret here. And that's why they call it, they call it the ping pong. Ping pong. Ping pong. As you hit, you hit this way, the body hits back. But now, those, those movements, there's aerobics there. You're doing aerobic this, um, exercise there. You are, you are doing brain, um, hand and, uh, uh, hand and uh, eye connection. You are doing uh, the body uh, muscle movement, all those things. And you are sharpening your brain. So just imagine we have we have women playing table tennis. Do you know the, the, the beautiful sight that we just see them play? Play. Or you go to organizations like I'm advocating now, put a table tennis board in every office. Once people have worked for nine, uh, uh, one and a half hours, two hours, stand up, go and do a five minutes toss, back forth, back forth, go back. Because it's been found now that sitting for long is a new smoking. Sitting for long is a new smoking. The last uh, world, um, what world heart day, world heart day, that was the, the move, it was about movement. And there's more that will come from here. So, so, so that yeah. means um, um, sitters are liable to die young. Yes. <laughs> Is that what it means? Long yes. sitters. Wow. Because of the cardiologist was saying, they ask the cardiologist, what are the things that you you are, you are advisable to stop doing? And he said, the number one thing is that they should sit for less and move more. Movement is key. It affects your even your productivity. All these performance are saying, Oh, you think you are performing so much by just sitting in one place for five hours? No. No. That short breaks, you go and come back. That's when the brain consolidates. Breaks, laughter, and sleep. They are partners in progress. Find children who enjoy playing and laughing together. They always be together and they solve their problems easily. You know, why we don't laugh together is why we will not, our problems will continue to linger. Our divide will be there. People that meet and laugh together resolve their problems fast. Wow. Wow. So breaks, laughter, did you say, sir? Yes, breaks, laughter, and sleep. These are the learning, these are the learning tools. These are the, the things 
that improves your learning. Go and do even with adults. Now you go and do one training. Like people, when you do training for adults and you don't understand how to train adults, they, they will just go there and say, Kai, I was sleeping throughout that month. Yes. Why? Yes. Because there's no activity. You need to engage them and check anyone you go. You find you see these adults, you say they are not fun people. Give them some activity, you'll be shocked. You see, everybody yeah. you know, comes alive. Everybody's alive. I say, What? And they want to go more, they want to learn more. But yeah. once you're boring, you're just reading the news, you know, newscasters, some presenters and newscasters, they'll just be reading, reading, reading. After casting the news, the, the people are asleep already. Thank so, you movement. So much. Uh, movement is key. it I helps you bring external um, activities i'm just doing this just uh, we're just talking to ourselves yes, but just yes. um, and to to yes. to to wake us up as parents let's love ourselves love yourself take yourself out to play go and take do bricks walking buy but buy table tennis uh, what do you call it a racket create something play once you start playing, you see your children will join you. Now that you're not playing, you're not, and see, I don't know, this thing is, I don't know how to do, I, I, you know, sometimes I, I don't know what to do about it. Do you know that as children move from, as children move from uh, primary to secondary school, there's no more time to play for them again. Yes. No more time to play. And can you see how, what we're, the problem we're having with teenagers now? All these mood issues and attitude problems coming from this non this no play. It's even worse with girls. What are the sports girls are playing? Boys try, they play football, they do this bad bit, they, they do table tennis. But what are the girls doing? You now as a mother, if your husband says, let's go and play table tennis, can you play? Bad bit, can you play? You say, no, 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 I'm busy, I'm busy, you're not busy, you can't play. You can't play. And since you can't play, your husband needs a chick to play with you. Your husband needs one chick. If he finds one chick playing with you, go and play. If he plays, don't put your two hands on your head and come and tell us, my husband, one woman, won't take my husband. The man wants to play. <laughs> the same way, the woman too wants to play, Oga. He wants, she wants to play. Come, let's go and play uh, uh, table tennis. You can't play. Go, let's go and do badminton. You can't play tennis. You can't play. Which okay, let's just you? let's jog. You no feel jog. You just don't want to do. No, that's not healthy. Before you know, you are seventy. You look back and regret. What did you really enjoy? Exactly. You just work hard and pay bills. Work hard, pay bills for children. These same children you are saying you are working for, you see them, they go and enjoy themselves. When he has finished school, he just does this service. He will bring one Angelina and say, wants to marry. With all the things you say, you are saying, hey, I'm free for my He will live his life and leave you. Live your life. Thank you so much, sir. I can see the comments that um, people are making. Um, I started exercising of recent and I found out that all the pains I used to have is gone without taking drugs. <laughs> Mercy Victor says, everything said here is true. Movement, carrying my bag from the market by myself is key for me. I wash yes. my car, clean the entire house by myself. I'm going to be engaging more in the exercise now. You know, dear parent, one thing I just realized about life is when you don't have a strong why, you don't follow through. You know, I've been trying to learn how to swim for, I'm 43 years old, I mean, this year. But I finally, I'm not an expert, but I, I can't drown in a pool now, I mean. And it was just because Mr. Isaac said to me, he didn't shout, he didn't say, he just said to me, you are an endangered species. That was the only thing I needed to jump into that water and conquer my fears. Because I couldn't just imagine how something happens and then other people can find their, their way around and then I am... And on classic, you know, a few days after that, I read a story somewhere outside Nigeria. A, a family watched their own die. They went, they went hiking, 
and there mm. was a lake around there. The boy fell. The father said, I watched him, but I couldn't do anything because I couldn't swim. In fact, the entire family was there. It was a family okay. picnic. So sometimes we don't have an understanding of these things. I recently also started exercising, not like I didn't used to do it before, but I, I used to do it like, let me just, for, for, for religious sake, for formality's sake. But I, I've come to understand, you know, because of some of these conversations that I've been having and because of the work I'm doing, I've come to realize that you can't even focus well when, when you're not able to create a routine around exercise and good meals. Me, who they used to beg not to eat bread. Now I'm, I'm joyfully not eating bread. Nobody is forcing me. I'm coming to that understanding that the kind of food, not like it's bad, bad, but you know, you need to just watch what you eat and the exercise you do. Today, I had only 10 minutes, 15 minutes to do my exercise at the gym. I said I would do it. I'm not, I'm going to do it. So I'm yes. now the one driving myself because I've been working all day and then I cannot carve out 15 minutes to do exercise. Not anymore. I am now my own my own, I'm the one pushing myself because I've had understanding of the why. And it's like a classic knows that that's my mumu button. So every time he wants to do something, he just says, you know, it's good for your brain. Once I hear it is good for your brain, because my brain is my capital. Yes. For those of you that have businesses, your office is your capital, your clothes, your products, your container from the high seas, that's your capital. For me, my brain is my capital. If anything happens to my brain, I'm not in business again. Because practically everything I'm doing is coming from my brain. So I can't joke. Once he told me that water and swimming was, was the food for my brain, I went to learn how to swim. Yesterday he asked me, can you play table tennis? I said, somehow. So I'm ordering a, a racket, whatever it is, I will That's start true. immediately. Me, I don't know how to postpone what is good for my brain. I take action immediately. <laughs> Thank you so much, Uncle Isaac. We have to let you go. But please, guys, don't forget that Uncle Isaac is going to be with our teenagers on Sunday. <laughs> He's going to be with them on Sunday. After we have talked to them about distractions, we have talked to them about um, having a mindfulness plan, you know, tools and exercises. We have talked to them about focus. The next thing we are going to do, and the last, which is for me the most important, is boost their brain power. Uncle Isaac, one parent registered, she lives in Australia. She said, Auntie Atima, I'm coming to this class. You say it's for teenagers. Me too, I'm above 10 years. I am coming to this class. I said, ah, ah. She said, I want to boost my brain power. Wow. The coach in yeah. Australia. So that's what caught her attention. So she said mm. she's coming to the class because she wants to boost her brain power. I am coming to that class as a participant, not just a facilitator. My husband, on classic has paid for his children. My husband registered his children. I told him this is not mommy organizing class. Everybody needs to be in this class to boost their brain. Look, there's so much we can do. I look at the Asians. I envy them, sir. These Asians. Yeah. Currently, they are my greatest envy because of the way they are, they are, they are, they are, they are stretching. They are moving. Everything they do, they see, they take is for the brain. The exercise they do is for the brain. Everything is, they are yeah. so mindful of their brains. That's it. Are they, are they more powerful than us? No. They are, just, they are just more intentional about these things. Thank you so much, sir, for actually, you know, delving into this brain issue. Where I mean, it's such a privilege to have you. We don't have too many people talking about the brain. Everybody's mm. talking about the spirit, the body, the mind. What of the brain? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Any last words for us as we go and get our children ready? Is, is there any exercise that, um, any tool our children should come to class with? Is there anything, just any last words for us as we prepare to go? Okay, just let them, let them come. We'll, we'll, we'll have a conversation together. But now that you know, now that you know, start. Go start something. Start playing something. Don't be, don't look for something very big. Start from where you are, your environment. Start there. And please, let's do engagements in our and support, form a support system around you. If you have two or three people around, engage them and say, let's meet and play. Once you have somebody who calls you to play, 
you'll be very interested, even if you forget, somebody reminds you. Let's, let's hold ourselves together so that we can all succeed in this journey. You need your brain power to be able to go through this parenting um, journey. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you so much, sir. And thank you, everyone. I can see Chima Valeria. I can see Tema Sanders, Temitopo Ajala, Messi Victor, Gladys Olisake. Those are the mothers in the girls' hall. I celebrate you. I'm sure you guys have heard, mothers, super moms. You have heard the coach has called us out, our girls. So get ready. When I start giving this my girls tasks, please, mothers, don't come and whine for me. Because I'm not going to have girls that don't have any superpowers <laughs> from their brain use. Hilda Brown, I celebrate you. Ify Andrew, thank you so much. Rosaline um, Sol Solari, thank you. Thank you, Tai Wobello. Thank you, Remy Ayo Jimmy. Thank you, Ezeme. Thank you, Rahima Abdul Salam. Thank you, Nachana. Thank you, Adaku. I can see you all. God bless you. And please um, see you at the distraction management class for Gen Z's. We begin tomorrow. And Uncle Isaac will be with us on Sunday. Uncle Isaac, we celebrate you. We are so grateful that you spent your evening with us. Bye, parents. God bless you. And see you in class. We celebrate you, sir. See you on Sunday. Bye, everyone. Have a blessed night.